Hello world. I don't apologise for looking slightly bizarre today. I've got green gilet on, red t-shirt, polo shirt, whatever. Black jacket that doesn't look very black in this light. On this silly camera. It's my Palestinian colours. And I'm not here to preach at you or whatever, but I do feel that, you know, my view, my views on YouTube are really insignificant and just totally not even there these days. So I think that, you know, if I'm going to, you know, go down, I might as well go down saying something vaguely important. And it's come to light as part of this Eurovision Song Contest thing. Now, I made a video a few weeks ago about Ollie Alexander's song Dizzy not being that great. And in it, I said that the elephant in the room was the fact that they were allowing a country that is committing genocide and forced starvation of over two million people uh, to, uh, and they're allowing those to compete in the Eurovision Song Contest. It's cultural whitewashing. It won't make any difference on whether or not they stop the uh, the bombing and you know allow food in they sh they shouldn't be the ones allowing food in or not allowing food in this is complete control it's coercive control that has existed now for over half a century and it's just not on it's just not on and they should not be allowed to take part uh, it, that really is my my feeling. But poor Oli Alexander is getting a letter now from uh, lots of artists to say, you know, to, to pressurise him to boycott the event, as have lots of the entrants. Uh, this comes from Al Jazeera, which is actually a few years ago. They were voted in some sort of journalistic kind of award ceremony or something that's the most reliable and trustworthy news agency or news broadcaster in the world and the BBC came second to them. So I'm going to read this, I'm going to comment on some of these things. I might get a little bit flustered, you never know. So this is dated from March the 13th, it's on Al Jazeera, it's called Why Was Israel Forced to Change Its Song Entry for Eurovision? The song contest prides itself on being non-political, but Israel's inclusion threatens to overshadow the music this year. For some, it is the Oscars. For others, it is Rio's carnival. For many, there is no annual event quite like Eurovision, the international singing contest extravaganza that attracts millions of viewers and features everything from power ballads and punk rock to death metal and folk dancing. But Israel's war on Gaza has taken centre stage in the usually non-political contest because of a row over the Israeli entry. In February, the European Broadcasting Union, the EBU, the organisers of the contest, rejected Israel's entry, a song called October Rain, on the grounds that it referenced the victims of the October the 7th Hamas attacks on southern Israel and was therefore too political. Israel, which will be competing in the competition's second semi-final on May the 9th, in the hopes of reaching the grand final two days later in Malmö, Sweden, initially declined to rework the song. But on Sunday, the country's 20-year-old entrant, Aidan Golan, I don't know how you pronounce her name, uh, performed Hurricane, a revised version of October Rain, live on Israeli TV. Palestinian supporters, however, are calling for Israel to be expelled from the contest altogether. And that's what I'm calling for. Palestinian supporters, however, are calling for Israel to be expelled from the contest altogether. And I am calling for them to be expelled from the contest. Now, the EBU has the right to do that. They expelled Russia many years after they should have expelled them. When Conchita sang Rise Like a Phoenix... I think it was 2014, something like that. The Russians all sort of expressed their disgust at this so-called freak being allowed to take part just because they're slightly gender fluid. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's just disgusting. It just, you know, they should have been told there and then get out. But instead they were allowed 
And everyone was saying the following year, oh, it's the music that matters. Oh, it's the music that matters. All this, you know, this rhetoric, whatever, which they'll doubtless have to do this year. But, um, you know, if Israel, sorry, if the EBU can quite rightly expel Russia, they can expel Israel. How has Israel's song changed? The original song included lines such as Writers of the history stand with me I'm still wet from this October rain There's no air left to breathe And they were all good children, each one of them These were deemed by Eurovision organisers to be too politically charged And a none too subtle reference to the Hamas assault on Israeli military outposts and surrounding villages during which 1,139 people were killed At first... Israeli public broadcaster Khan, which is responsible for choosing the country's entry, refused to accept the EBU's ruling. But after Israeli President Isaac Herzog intervened, Khan dropped its opposition. The public broadcaster said the president emphasised that at this time in particular, when those who hate us seek to push aside and boycott the state of Israel from every stage, Israel must sound its voice with pride and its head high and raise its flag in every world forum, especially this year. It's been proven that every word that has come out from Israel since the 7th of October and since their retaliation on the 7th of October has been a lie. So... You know, this is, this is just empty words. Khan said the new song is a romantic ballad. This is the public broadcaster, Khan, yeah? Uh, said the new song is a romantic ballad featuring lyrics like Dancing in the storm, I got nothing to hide, take it out and leave the world behind. Baby, promise me you'll hold me again. I'm still taken from this hurricane. Hurricane remain, retains the same melody as the disqualified October rain. When Hurricane was announced as the new song entry on Sunday, Golan herself, that's Eden Golan, that's the competitor, remarked, I ended up competing in a not simple year. And bless her cotton socks. It must be horrible for her. I mean, she you know, feels like an absolute pawn in all of this, really. But I think, you know, maybe she ought to take a deep gulp and say there'll be, enough, there'll be other years, but just not this year. And hopefully not until Israel stop this horrendous assault on Gaza. I don't approve, by the way, of the Hamas attacks on Israel. That seems to be a stupid thing to do, knowing how Israel might react. So, you know, yes, the Hamas attack was dreadful. It was absolutely dreadful. But what is going on now is far worse. But on the other hand, she added, I even more so want to represent the country this year because of its meaning. It has a totally different significance and we can bring everything we're feeling and everything the country is going through in those three minutes to speak through the song to the world. I don't know, I, I, that just seems like empty words. It doesn't, it doesn't really say anything. You know, and if anyone's going through anything, it's not your country, love. In Israel, which has hosted Eurovision three times and won it on four occasions since it's made its debut in 1973, emotions are running deep. Dudi Fat Fatima, writing in the Jerusalem report on Tuesday, panned Hurricane as boring and mundane. Well, <laughs> there you go. That's every single blooming entry. Another glaring flaw is that except for a sentence or two in Hebrew that Golan sings, it's all in English. Fatima added, generally I understand the need for English, but in a period where Israeli existence is in existential danger. Sorry, whose existence? Whose existence is in existential danger? You've got two million Palestinians. Oh, over 40,000 it must be now dead. Others under the rubble. Others starving to death. Others unaccounted for. Babies with life-threatening injuries. I'll read you a, um, a, a tweet from a Swedish journalist in a moment. And I wonder, you know, who is under existential threat? Yes, it was horrendous what happened to you. 9-11 was horrendous. But given 
you know, the role that America has played in the amount of dead people in the world. 9-11, I'm sorry for all of your families and all of your relatives and everything like that. And I really do feel that. It was a terrible atrocity. It should not have happened. But it was like the, the school child in the playground that bullies everybody and then comes up to teach you with a... Oh, he hurt my finger. I've cut my knee. And you think, yeah, but what have you done to everybody else? And this is, this is what I feel is happening here. You know, yeah, Hamas was a terrible atrocity, but it pales into insignificance compared to everything before October the 7th and everything after October the 7th. So this bit about existential danger, it, it butters no parsnips, I'm sorry. You know, there, there's absolutely no way that anyone in the world would allow Israel with what it's been through, you know, there's no way that we're gonna allow Israel to not exist. But at the same time, they must allow others to exist. That is my point. So anyway, yes, a period where Israel's existence is in existential danger, a song that's entirely or mostly in Hebrew carries an explanatory message. And Golan, in this competition, is here to perform, not to explain to us. She has no chance of winning, not even remotely. How have pro-Palestinian campaigners reacted? The Palestinian Campaign for the Academic and Cultural Boycott of Israel, PACBI, has urged a boycott of this year's Euro Eurovision. In January, more than 1,400 professional musicians from Finland signed a petition calling for the EBU to expel Israel from the competition. But last month, the, the EBU's Director General, Noel Curran, said Israel would remain in the competition. 1,400 professional musicians from Finland well, Finland, you're a beautiful country, we love you and everything, but you're hardly the, you know, the biggest influence on Eurovision, are you? It needs, it needs everybody to put that same amount of pressure, or more than that amount of pressure, to say, EBU, ban Israel. The Eurovision Song Contest, says Noel Curran, the EBU's Director General, is a non-political musical event. <laughs> Someone tell the late, great Terry Wogan that it was a non-political event, please. We know it's not. We know that they all vote for their friends. We know that you can fix it. There's no one telling me, you know, as much as I feel for the countries involved and everything, there's no one that's telling me that 2022 was not a fix. It was a fix. The Eurovision Song Contest is a non-political music event and a competition between public service broadcasters who are members of the EBU, Curran said. It is not a contest between governments. Some have raised parallels with the 2020 EBU decision to expel Russia after its full-scale invasion of Ukraine that year, but Curran rejected the comparison. In the case of Russia, the Russian broadcasters themselves were suspended from the EBU due to their persistent breaches of membership obligations and the violation of public service values, he said. I wonder if they were referring to Conchita there. All this row is doing is penalising those people whose countries are not committing genocide. You know, just the, you know, the ordinary competitors. Like Sweden. For example, this year it's ABBA's 50th anniversary since they won with Waterloo. They're having a bit of a celebration. They've, they've got some kind of ABBA village that they've set up in Malmo for a month, which is a definite tie into the contest. It's definitely in uh, recognition of their 50 years since they won the Eurovision. People can go there. You know, the people going to Malmo to see the contest will find this ABBA village set up and you can see snippets of things like the Avatars concert. They've set up bits from the ABBA museum and all kinds of other ABBA things. So it kind of puts a sour taste 
on that as well. You know, all the EB you need to do is swallow their hypocrisy and ban Israel. It is the right thing to do. Oli Alexander, as far as I know, hasn't responded to uh, the calls for him to ban. It's a shame. Israel, you need to get the hell out of the contest this year. I'm so sorry. It is not this competitor's fault at all, but it's just far too sensitive. You need to get out. Israel as a country, you need to stop what you're doing. You know, and you can't expect to be sort of taking part in music festivals, sports festivals, whatever, until you stop this terrible atrocity. I'm glad I'm saying something about it. Before I go, the tweet from Owen Jones yesterday. He's reposted someone called Trita Parzi, who's quoting a Swedish report from Gaza. A little boy with a bruised face, no more than 11 or 12, exited the ambulance. I asked if he was okay and saw blood dripping from his backpack. Do you know what I have in the backpack? He asked. My little brother, Ahmed. I have nothing at all against ordinary Israeli uh, citizens. I have nothing at all against Jewish people. I just feel that what they're, what they're doing is inhumane. It is inhumane. Yes, it's against international law. No, I don't believe that the EBU banning Israel from the competition will solve it, but it might help people to take part without wanting to spit. That's really my, <laughs> my, my opinion here. If the UN can't get them to stop, then, you know, who can? You know, well, America could actually, but... Sorry I'm going on. Remember to like, subscribe, share if you dare. If possible, leave a super thanks below and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.